talk about making a, a more complete circuit. Let's put an EMF. Let's put an EMF in this series combination of 10 volts. All right, well, we know from the loop law that if we put a loop in here, all the voltages added up should equal zero. Well, like this. So V1 plus V2 plus V3 minus the EMF must equal zero. Now, why must this have different, a different sign than these three? Well, the most popular analogy, but a good one, is the waterfall. It's the mechanical waterfall. In other words, like the water is falling down here, but something must be recycling it to bring it back to the top so it could fall down again. What recycles it, that motor inside, is an analogy to the EMF. It's, take, and then it's taking the water, it's falling down, putting it back up so it can fall down again, putting it back so it can fall down again. So, it's almost like here, the water is falling, and the EMF sucks it back up, and then falls down again, and it sucks it back up. Yeah. Now, now, all three of these, so if I set this EMF to 10 volts, when I directly measure V1 plus V, and then add it to V2, add it to V3, these three added together should be 10 volts. Okay, so now let's find the current. We can directly measure the current by including a current meter in series, in series. Put the current meter in series. All right, and now, so we can, we can measure it this way, and now to calculate it, well, we've got to remember why we did all those resistance formulas to begin with. Well, that allows us to rewrite this as an equivalent circuit of this. One resistor, current meter here, back to the EMF. That's the EMF, and now this is RS. That's the current meter. This is an equivalent resistance. Great, so we can, we can now measure the RS, measure the EMF, we can now calculate the resistance, the, the, the current, the current. And then we can use this current with the three resistances to calculate our, our theoretical values for V1, V2, V3, see if that matches up with what you directly measure. All right, let's take a look at this. All right. All right, so let's put together our circuit. These are already in series. Okay, so I'm going to see, going to come out of the battery. I'm going to go in to this knob here. Okay, so now the current's going to go through our one, through this connecting wire, through our two through this connecting wire, through R3, and then out here, and then out here. And now the next thing that's in series is the current meter. Okay, so the current meter, I have, the high end is here, and we're going to be in milliamps since we have kilo ohms here. So that's there. And now, the COM is for common ground, so that's going to be what goes back to the power source right here. Okay, so now R1, R2, R3, current meter are all in series. So now, to get our 10 volts, we need to use this to measure. I'm going to put this across all three resistors. In other words, so high end where it starts and the low end where it comes out. Switch to DCV on the voltmeter and then to turn the current meter on, turn the knob all the way until you can't turn it on anymore. 
That's direct current amperage. All right, one hand behind the back. Let's turn this on. Let's get 10 volts. All right, black knob for big changes, red knob for small changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, terrific. 10 volts. We can measure our current now through here. All right, now let's remove this and find V1, V2, V3. So we want to keep the positive end on the high ends of each of them. So let's see here. So the current comes into here. This is the high end. And now this is the low end to find V1. All right. So now let's see, it comes in through here and through here. Aha, uh -huh. so this is the high end now. It, it switched. And now this is the low end, V2. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so now let's see, it comes in here and here and here. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so this is the high end. That's the low end, V3. Add those up together, should be 10 volts. All right. All right, turn that up. <sighs> Last order of business is the no law. The no law. So let's build our circuit. Let's build it. We have a different kind of circuit this time. So we have our three resistors here. We want to put R2 and R3 in parallel and then this parallel combination in series with R1. And then here comes out of the EMF of 5 volts, and then here goes back to ground. So here is our node. Here is our node. So we'll have current coming in this way, that will be I1, and then current going out, I2, and then more current going out, I3. So in one case it's going in, in two cases it's going out. So right away we know that these two should have a different sign than this. In other words, if this is positive, these need to be negative. Because when you add them together, they should equal zero. The no law. All right, so now when measuring the voltages, we're not so interested in confirming the loop law this time. We need some of these voltages to be negative, so we want to just stick the negative end, the low end, on the node, and then we'll measure the different voltages from the node. Because when we calculate I1, I2, I3 based on those measured voltages, if all the voltages were positive, we would get all positive currents, and they want to add together to be zero. So say if V1 is positive, V2, V3 must be negative. And that's what you get if you leave the negative end of the node. All right, let's find those. Let's find those. All right. All right, so let's, all right, so let's start over. So, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, that's my favorite part. Oh, this never gets old. 